call this meeting to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silent reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world and also for those who have passed away in our community. Roll call. Mr. King. Here. Mr. Schuster. Present. Dr. Rothschild. Here. Mr. McAndrew. Present. Mr. Donahue. Here. So I would like to make a motion to take from the table resolution number 81 of 2022. Second. There is a motion on the floor and a second to take this to take from the table resolution number 81 of 2022. This piece is being taken from the table and placed in seventh order for a final vote. Uh, this resolution is the professional service contract with PFM Financial Advisors. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Please dispense with the reading of the minutes. Third order, 3A, correspondence received from OECD regarding code enforcement report for council complaints dated May 31st, 2022. 3B, minutes of the Scranton Redevelopment Authority regular meeting held May 4th, 2022. 3C, presentation by city administration regarding Nayog Park pool complex renovation and cost options received May 31st, 2022. 3D, correspondence received June 2nd, 2022, from Kaylee Pakulski, City HR Director, regarding position updates as of May 2022. 3E, Scranton Wastewater Sewer Replacement and Rehabilitation Project Listing, received June 3rd, 2022, from Pennsylvania American Water Company. 3F, correspondence received from OECD Director regarding City of Scranton's grant list, 2020 through 2022. Are there any comments on any of the third order items? I have comments for, for two of these items. <clears throat> First, I'd like to discuss the pool proposal that um, I've now had more than uh, a few minutes to review. Um, I reached out to um, some local architects and engineers. I got a few numbers. Um, just to get their perspective on this plan that was presented last week. Um, one thing I'd like to say is that the plan that we were presented seems to be about a million dollars over, a uh, uh, million dollars inflated. I'm gonna start with some of the most egregious line items that I noticed and identified here. About 10 of the 15 were, were over budgeted. First off, the pool line item. Um, in the proposal, it was stated at about 250 per square foot. Um, this seems to be about $50 more per square foot. Um, next line item was utilities. So keep in mind that this site already exists. There's already gas, there's already water, there's already electric, there's already sewer. Um, this line item, line item was about 400 to $425,000. Um, again, this site already exists. It seemed to be the price for a facility that was more than a mile away from utility hookups. Also, after, prior to utilities, we had the restroom and bathhouse, which some of these utilities would also be included in that item, line item, so these two line items are inflated. Next, we look at the plaza area. The plaza area, they're, they're charging about $12 per square foot, which should be around nine. Next line item, synthetic turf. The cost of the synthetic turf per square, 1,000 1, square feet, is $246,000 as opposed to $30,000 for 1,000 square feet of lawn. So with this line item here, it's, it's a no-brainer. Um, we should be looking to, to do this with lawn. Um, I mean, decisions like this are why we get into distressed status. Landscaping total was high. They, they figured it was about $30,000 too high. Um, topsoil, 
the, the number here seems to be about right, but it depends on the depth of the topsoil, so we will have to get some more information on that one. Fencing. I don't, I don't know. I'd have to go up and take a look at the fencing, but there might be some sections of the fence that are in use. I don't know. I just figured I would ask at this point in time. Um, site amenities. This line item here, I'm not really sure what it is. I think we need a lot of... Uh, Explanation, it's very vague, and just keep in mind it's $250,000 for the line item. Next one, administration and permits. This line item is at $175,000. I'm very surprised that the city doesn't waive its own permits. I don't understand why we would move one, one piece of our budget from one, one place to another. It doesn't seem to make sense. Um, the contingency. The contingency here is set at 20%. We, we got an original plan about one and a half years ago to two years ago. The contingency at that point in time was 10%. 10% is more of an industry standard, although it is on the high side. But if you look at this, this 20%, it's about a million dollars in contingencies. We should be looking to um, get into contracts with people that aren't going to change. We're not going to see any change orders coming in. The budget should be tight on these projects. If we were to sustain a million dollar contingency piece, we would need an itemized list of the accounting of what, what this actually means, what, what it's being used for, and we should have zero change orders. Last line item, design and engineering. First off, because it's the same site, it should run about 3% to 5%. This is the industry standard. And that should be all inclusive from start to finish. This proposal, sets the design and engineering at 15%, which is three times the industry standard. The design we were presented with last week is a three foot deep pool. Um, I think we all decided that we could probably scale back the splash pad. We'd like a more traditional design. And the last thing I'm gonna speak about here with the NAOG pool is the bathhouse. So from the study that we, we received a year and a half ago from two firms, MKSD, they state that the existing bathhouse is approximately 1,500 square feet and consists of lobby space, men's and women's toilet rooms, and two lifeguard storage spaces. The committee informed us that this layout does not meet the needs of the park guests because it lacks locker room and changing areas, which keep in mind the bathrooms can be uh, dual usage as changing areas, and places to gather during periods of inclement weather, administrative office space, and meeting and party rooms. Um, this building was built in 2003, 2004. I do think we need to take another look at this bathhouse to see what we could do with it. Um, I, I don't think raising the existing bathhouse might be in our, our best interest. I think we do need to take another look at this. So as I said last week, um, as I think we all agree, I would like to see a more traditional pool. I'd like to see a scale back of the splash pad. I'd like to take another look at the bathhouse. And um, when we talked, when we spoke about um, funding, um, the funding was about a million dollars off, and this, these proposals that we have seem to be about a million dollars inflated. <laughs> On to my next item, 3D. We received correspondence from the city's HR director, and one of the um, positions on there is now considered non-exempt. So Frank, could you please send correspondence to HR and inquire why the safety and recycling coordinator is now considered a non-exempt position for overtime? Um, back in March, I did request a uh, clarification on non-exempt and exempt positions. And on March 1st, we did receive word from the HR department that this position was a non-exempt position. Last year, if I'm going off of memory, the DPW administration overtime was about 706% over budget. Um, one of those positions was moved into a different department. It seems like the overtime has come down, and now we are moving one of the exempt positions into non-exempt. So if we could get uh, correspondence to HR and inquire as to uh, what the, if we can clarify why this is. I will, sir. Thank you. That is all. Any other council members have any comments on any of the third order items? <clears throat> if not, received and filed. Do any council members have any announcements at this time? Um, I do. Uh, 
on Saturday, this past Saturday, uh, the pride flag was uh, was put up in front of City Hall, um, which was a it was a great event. It was uh, great to have everyone in attendance there. Um, and I just wanted to say Happy Pride Month. And um, the other announcement that I had uh, in reference to 5B uh, for Juneteenth, um, I just wanted to make the public aware that there will be a Juneteenth Jubilee a celebration uh, that Black Scranton Project is hosting uh, at their building on uh, 1902 North Main Avenue. And that will be Sunday, June 19th from 12 to 5 p.m. and it's uh, an outdoor event. That's all, thank you. Thank you, do any other council members have any announcements? Just quickly, um, I, once again, I wanna thank the city DPW for the work that was done uh, on Mountain Lake Road. Um, all of our shocks are now saved, our tires. Um, that was so long overdue um and and it was a job well done they they fixed all the infrastructure and the drainage so uh kudos to uh dpw on, on the job well done on the paving project on east mountain thank you any other council members have any announcements i have a quick one i want to commend mr schuster on his comparison analysis from uh, from last week's presentation in third order thanks good job anyone else with any announcements Mr. Voldenberg. Fourth order, citizens participation. First on the list is Joseph Albert. Thank you. It's unfortunate that the uh, taxpayers, citizens, and residents don't care enough about what goes on in this city that they fail to attend council meetings. And I apologize on one of them also. But there was an interesting story from your last meeting about giving away a city street to a private enterprise so they could attempt to make a profit and do things better. I'm talking about Center Court off of Adams Avenue and Washington Avenue that connects both streets, which are one way, which is on your agenda <laughs> to give away to a private operation. I vehemently and adamantly oppose it and recommend that you, if possible, table this action for further study. The last time something from the taxpayers was given away, it cost this city over $100,000 a year in taxes. And I'm referring to the Globe Store, which the, Better Bus the Chamber of Commerce owned, gave it to the county and took it off the city tax rolls. And now you want to take a public street, close it off, and give it to a private individual so they can have a park and do a better business. Again, I ask that you table this ordinance and resolution for further study. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next on the list is Norma Jeffries. Good evening, Council. Norma Jeffries, city resident. And I, a couple things I want to say that I just learned since I came here tonight, and um, Councilman Schuster, I appreciate the detail that you gave on the pool tonight. I was uh, aware of what you were talking about because I have those slides. But I kept thinking, what about the public? They, don't, they have no idea what you're talking about. They're just hearing words. 
it would be so great. I mean, you have your laptop there that you could work with ECTV and get it up on the screen so that you could use pointers as you went down those and you could show the public what you're talking about. I mean, I knew what you were talking about and I appreciate everything that you said tonight. Agreed with a lot of it, you know, because I, I, I've been at those meetings. So, but that's just me. And I, I don't know other people out here in um, the audience tonight, whether they know exactly what you were talking about tonight. So just something to think about going forward. Use our technology. You have your laptop, and all you have to do is put it up on the screen so that people can see what you're talking about. So um, that was my little thing for tonight. Um, the things that I have on my list was um, I've been trying to get in touch with the IT department because on August the 6th, we're having the Electric City Flower Show, and I want that up on the city website. I look there, you've got the food things about the Greek festivals coming and all the other things. I want this up on there. I called them twice and left my name and my number. Nobody bothered to call me back. Let me know what I need to do, because I, it's going to be August the 6th. I want it up at least by July 1st, so we have the whole month of July. I'm going to be talking with ECTV as well. I want our slide up on the TV. We want to try to get as much publication. This is a first for the city of Scranton to have an Electric City Flower Show. So help me, you know, to get in touch with IT so that they can tell me what to do and how to get that information up on the screen. The second thing I wanted to say, and um, Councilman King, you brought it up before, the, the job that the uh, DPW did up on the mountain is fantastic. I go up and visit an elderly friend up there that's 97 years old, and I try to get up there at least once a week or every other week, and um, you know, she's on Yasu Drive, so of course she got, uh, the paving was wonderful, and the culvert that they put in to keep that water from going over the road and tearing up that road is excellent. You know, so my kudos as well to the DPW for the great work that they did up there. And they were so gracious to me because the one day I came up and they were busy working, working, asked me where I wanted to go. And I told them, they said, oh, come on, and, you know, and they directed me down around all their equipment and everything, and I got to visit her. So I thank them for that as well. Um, another thing about the streets, and um, that's Gibson and Clay Avenue. I don't know what the issue is there. But it's like you have to s slow down to like zero miles because it drops off and then they paved a little bit and then it goes up again and then you have to go over. And I, I think it goes all the way down Clay Avenue. I don't know who did the work or whether it was gas, electric, or whoever, but it is a very, very disturbing. I think that's, that restoration project is in progress and I think they said the middle of July that would be completely done all the way down Clay, up, what is it, Vine to yeah. uh, North Webster, I believe, and then it goes down North Webster. Oh, I don't know. I just but the, but there, it was a water project, but the whole restoration, I think, should be done relatively soon. Well, that's... They okay. milled it, so th they just have to come and pave it now. Okay. Because it's, um, you know, you come up that hill and you forget that you're at Clay Avenue, you yes. know, because you can't really see. Okay, that's my other thing. And then um, I've, come, I've asked about this um, intersection before, I've got to hurry up, uh, um, Clay, and, um, Clay and Vine Street. They, that no parking needs to be there. Someone's going to get broadsided by that intersection. And I've mentioned it time and time again because it needs a no parking sign there. That's just that one. And then the other thing that I have, I wanted to concur with Mr. Albert, was it? That spoke about Center Street. I, I read that as well, and I've been down that street because they did a walkability, and I went on it with uh, Wayne Evans, and it's a wonderful street, it really is, and could be so much possibility. But my thing was, where am I gonna park when I go down there? So it, it's, it's only a small section yes, it is. of the road. I, I could address it in fifth order, Okay. If, but it's only a small section and yeah. it's not being given to any, I mean, there's the parking garage right next door, but it's for more com community events. 
Yes, but I just feel that it's for the center city residents and not residents like me that don't live in center city because if I'm going down there, I'm going to be driving and it's going to be after five o'clock so that I have to find parking on the street and walk in. Okay. Or, yeah, or there's the Casey garage that's right next door. Or Is that the, free? No, it's not. No. <laughs> you know, and thank remember, you. I'm putting all my money into my gas tank nowadays, you know. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Next on the list is Ron Elman. Good evening, Council. First off, for all my hate filled radical associates that can't wait for Mistress Myers to dictate their next agenda. I want them to take off their blinders for a few minutes and look up a, on their computers a documentary that's being shown by an Indian journalist named Demish Desi, D-E-M-E-S-H, D-E-S-U-S-I. <clears throat> It's called 2000 Muse, M-U-L-E-S. They're the ones that do all the work. Now, this man was put in jail by Biden to shut him up and stop him. That's why it took so long to get this documentary out and on television and in the movies, I guess. It shows Biden's goal seems to be to control Americans from top to bottom. Look this, look this up, 2000 and Muse. It's something to, to see because it's, it's there. It's, it's not all this misinformation that everybody says is out. You can see facts right there. Next is, a, I want to talk real quick about Guy Singer seems to be deliberately stalling purposely for some reason. You know, they, they knew a couple years ago they are going to buy the property. They know what they're doing. It's, it's time for somebody to do something to let them uh, explain to the city their actions. Let's just assume these 24 properties paid $2,000 taxes. Are they going to uh, assume the taxes till they decide to do something? And will the, the new buildings, will they be taxed fairly in a couple of years, two, three years from now? Because I really doubt it. Everybody I talk to doubts it would be a whitewash. It, you know, it brings to mind, I forgot what year, like 15 years ago, when Lackawanna College bought that little building. They knew right then and there they were going to be like a big octopus and take everything around it off the tax rolls. And that's what's happened. Now it's happening with Guy Singers. The city needs to just do something to protect the taxpayers. I talked to a man a couple of weeks ago, when last week, he's applied for housing with the city. He can't afford it anymore. He put a roof on the house he has now. He says he, he can't sell it, so he's going to abandon it. It's, an, it's a HUD house. And the other person, a couple has the same thing. They have a reverse mortgage for years. They owe far more than the house is worth and they applied for housing. People can see the handwriting on the wall. You know, Jerry and Debbie seem to want to cleanse the city of these people. There's no doubt about it. Uh, the low income, the minorities, they're the first ones to be affected by, like I said two weeks ago, I'm paying over a thousand dollars more for utilities. 
so are you guys, and so are these people. Everybody is because of Wolf. I don't like us, and I'm not going to vote for him, I don't think. I like Fetterman better. I'm an independent, remember. But I got a fear of Fetterman following Wolf's policies and agendas. He's there so long. The same with Shapiro. It's, Pennsylvania is a very important state right now. It's more important than most of the people that live here know. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Elman. Next on the list is Derek Raines. Take your time. No, I'm a retired government employee. You don't want to tell me that. Oh, that should be good. Ready? Yes. Am I my five minutes? Um, I can't see the timer, so if anybody would like to tell me when I'm at four minutes, or five minutes, or close. Um, my name's Derek Raines. I live at 919 Monroe Avenue. I used to come to this a lot back in the day with my good friend Eddie Paisano and um, the other people in the Hill Neighborhood. I was on the Board of Directors for the Hill Neighborhood Association uh, for many years with my good friend Ozzy Quinn. We did a lot of good things for the Hill Association. But now I'm having problems. So now I'm here. I'm here for a couple different reasons. Number one is handicap accessibility in the city of Scranton does not comply with the American with Disability Act. You cannot take a 36-inch chair up the ramp in the back of this building. I mean, it just barely fits. We need to have somebody like our physical therapist person here who should be qualified in the ADA and say, oh, you know what? That pathway needs to be wider. And that's something that needs to be done. And it, it, it's the American with Disability Act, I can complain to the Department of Justice about the issues that I have and they can withhold funding to the city of Scranton. Does it happen? I don't know, but that's a process of me not being able to rectify my issues. My big issue now is 919 Monroe, 900 block of Monroe between Myrtle Street and Ash Street. It rains, the water comes. The city allowed the um, water company to take a storm drain out of the middle of the block, which happened to be right in front of one of our prominent judges' house, and if he still lived there, that problem would be solved. So what happens now, it rains, all that water just comes. All the water coming down, Myrtle Street, Ash Street, it, it's all there, and it all ends up going to the front of my driveway where my apron is to get into my driveway. I have a handicapped brand van. In the winter time, I can't drive through three feet of snow that is sitting there because there's nowhere for this water to go. The water, it stays there all the time. There's water um, in front of 918 Monroe. It will stay there until it turns to mud and just becomes a mess. We had David DeCosmo came out, did a great story on it, nothing was done. And it's just, it is so disheartening to live in such a beautiful house in a city that really does not care about the people. I have sent photos, I have sent letters 
to the mayor and our former physical therapist when she was still on Facebook. I've asked her to come by my house sometime. Nobody ever comes over. I do, um, Mr. McAndrew, he does at least answer some of my emails, which maybe, maybe not. He may not be able to help me, but at least it gives me that satisfaction that somebody is listening. The last message I mailed to the mayor's office about all these pictures, did my wife give you those pictures? My wife, Jill, is going to bring you up my photographs that you can peruse through. This is my wife, Jill, um, a city of Scranton resident all her life until we moved all over the United States. Um, a wonderful woman, and I, I'm happy to have her. So, oh, I lost my whole train of thought. The um, issue with, where's the hat, Jill? It's gone. Oh, you were talking about the roads and the water. Oh, the roads damage. and the water in front of uh, my apron in front of the thing. So what happened was there was a big, huge storm drain there, and all the city does. And I will testify in front of every one of you, you will not find a cleaner center of the road than mine. They never clean the edges because nobody knows when they're ever going to sweep the amount of debris and garbage that is along the curb and that's another thing they ripped out all the curbs when they did the stormwater thing they never fixed any of that now all that garbage and literally garbage is all there um call dpw stuff to the mayor the mayor the 311 thing the lady said oh why don't i go over take pictures of all the houses and get the addresses and stuff. And I said to her, I'm disabled. I'm a disabled veteran. I cannot go policing the houses. We should have residents who are protected by our LIPS people. They should be going around and say, oh, you know what? Here's a car that's sat here for a year and a half. Why don't we do something about it? Nope not going to happen. You go down my street and you see that gravel and gravel. You go from my house, one of my favorite places to go is Zupo's down on Ash Street. I'll ride down to there in my chair, which my chair, Price is Right rules. Anybody want to take a guess? No, $37,000 for this chair. And I have to drive it down the middle of the street because there's no accessibility in this city for disabled people. It just is awful. I cannot go to Moses Taylor, three blocks from my house. The only way I can get there, drive right down the middle of the road. Oh, sometimes the people honk. It's just unbelievable. The city needs to look about walking. Why don't they look at walking in the neighborhoods? Why don't they go around and say, oh, you know what? These sidewalks are horrible. What they did at my grandma's house in Muncie, Indiana, they said, oh, you need new sidewalks replaced. We're going to replace it, and we're going to add the payment to your taxes. Miss and th that was something that was just done. So back to the garbage in the alley, these people, when I say these people, I don't know who the people are. They drive down in the, in the night, and they just say, Oh, you know what? I have a couch. Why don't I just get rid of this couch? The garbage men take it. Miss so I'm going to put it in that new building that Geisinger and the city, whatever, I can't think of the agency, built a beautiful house right behind us. But people just use it. Oh, it's empty. Let me throw my TV there. Let me throw my couch there. And it's... Miss, Mr. Raines. How much time now I left? None. Oh. <laughs> You're a little late. Sweat. I'm sorry. But we'll send uh, DPW out and then also lips out into the alley behind your house in the 900 block? 900 block of McKenna okay. Court. Can I add one quick thing you forgot? They did come out and look at our road, someone from the city. And he said the big problem with our road is it's never been graded. So the center of the road is so much higher. Like okay. Much so that's, he said that's the main problem with our water runoff is nothing goes down the road. It goes in because of yes. the grading of the street. Okay. Do you know, when, was, when was the last time they were, when were they out? He was just out a couple months ago. He came out and talked to us and okay. he looked at everything and he just said that the biggest problem is they keep paving without grading and it yes. just got so out of hand that 
I mean, I just lost two thousand dollars worth of landscaping. It's back in my backyard. Again okay. Because the water. Yes. All right. We'll we'll have them look. We'll see if they have if they came up with anything and see if we could get an answer on that. We'll also send uh, licensing inspection out. To, and then to, to add, we do have a physical therapist who is here who knows the American with Disability Act. And, and she should be able to say. So we, we have had conversations about the ramp in the back. and Great. It's, Excellent. It's not, you know, I wish it was something we There's could There's no easy but fix. It's, yeah. No easy fix. For and when, when we do do pavings, new pavings this, on the city end and also on, in both city projects, we, they do try to upgrade the, uh, the corners to be accessible. You know, you again, picture? that's not something that's going to happen overnight. But as the city paves, those are city paving projects. I don't know if I'll look into if we make that one. I don't think house. we require the utilities with their paving projects to do <clears throat> new ones that don't exist already. The one they by my house is also a school bus stop. And we yes. have nine disabled, eight disabled people on my block who cannot walk. Yeah, but I know the city does. You know, with, with new paving projects, they do put in the ADA accessibility. So I, I, I know it's not, you know, it's not an easy fix, but. And I'm going to tell you on a positive note, as I'm leaving, just to end on a positive note, I did get asked about how is the city's website for disabled people. And I went through all the stuff with the mayor for that, and I said, it is wonderful. Good to hear. Thank you. And, and Derek, your most recent pictures and issues, I forwarded to Mr. Voldenberg. Um, I think it was Monday or Tuesday, so yeah, he's on it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you all so much. And thank you to all the people who come here and say their things time and time again. Next on the list is Lee Morgan. <clears throat> Good evening, Council. Lee Morgan. Um, tonight I'm going to start off by uh, giving a phone number. That number is 570-558-1648. That is a telephone number with the, rec with the uh, answering machine on it. I think it's time to get started on um, the Home Rule Charter in this city and start talking about making revisions to the city government and the way things are done here in this community. Um, and hopefully people will start with that and the next thing up will be a web page and we have a lot of problems in this city and we have to face the reality and this isn't a shot at any one person in general but this city's been spinning backwards for almost my entire lifetime and people deserve much more a better government a more receptive government and they deserve a city that's growing and um, works for its citizens. And I, I just really don't feel that exists, Mr. Schuster. Uh, you know, I agree with what you talked about today, and I'm, and I'm glad you took enough time to review the things you did, but we've got to start reviewing everything. Now, I'd like to say that when I was a young man in my 20s, myself and a group of Scrantonians went to school to learn to do curbs and sidewalks, the federal government paid us. And the city itself eliminated the program. So you can see that the city really has played fast and loose with politics, but it's never really done anything for its citizens because all these people now are retired or dead. And this city could have brand new curbs and sidewalks throughout the whole city. And my father was a master carpenter, so there's not much I don't know how to do. We all spent our time to go to school to learn mixes and to put curbs in and do catch basins and everything. The city could have just really had something really good going for itself, but we've played politics for too long. 
and maybe the people tonight will be listening to the phone number I gave them, and they can find it on YouTube, 570-558-1648, and let's do something for our city, and let's not scapegoat people. And the other thing I want to say is that I'm really disappointed, I, and, and like I've said before, I think the president we have now is the worst president we've had in our history, even though they're trying to compare him to Buchanan, um, who was the gateway president to the Civil War, but I think he's worse than him. You know, we keep talking about the guns, and you know something? Guns are a tool. Depends whose hand they're in. But the one thing we're not talking about in this country is how our children are raised because psychologists and people who've studied it are terrified about what's happening in America. Fatherless families in massive numbers and what happens to male children and females to some degree that don't have a father. And the system that's created it all goes all the way back to Johnson and forward. You know, at one time, I remember when I was a kid, you know, the kids would laugh and say that the black kids didn't know their father was. They thought it was a joke. It was funny. I'm not saying it in a racist note. It's just the way it was. Now there's just so many people. They have no idea who their father is, and they're running around. And of the last 18 of the last 20 shooters had no father. And we're talking about the gun. We've got to talk about society. We've got to talk about 62 million Americans aborted. We've got to talk about a culture of death and destruction that we've created in our own country. The politics is created. We've got, to, we've got to ask ourselves, where are the playground programs and the youth programs and the mentoring programs? We're moving mountains and massive amounts of debts for projects and we're not invest, investing anything in our children, even in their schools. Why isn't there a, a Uniform Funding Act in Pennsylvania to bring all schools on the same plateau? Question that. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the list, Dave Dobson. Good evening, Council. Dave Dobson, resident of Scranton. Uh, I'd like to make a mention, as long as we're on roads of Mattis Avenue, down by uh, General Dynamics or the old Chamberlain. That's been a mess for a year or two. That's supposed to be restored sometime soon. Uh-huh. Great. Great. Hopefully. Uh, with that pool, I mentioned it once before, that bathhouse is not a legal bathhouse. So I would say it's a reasonably new building. Let's not tear it down, but let's consider winging it out. Because it'd be quite plain and simple. I was doing a number whiz and uh, there was a kid getting dressed about a foot away from me during a kids swim free event so it's not really a bathhouse it's not acceptable as a bathhouse and it is reasonably new so it could be an entrance or something and then people could drift off to the bathhouse uh, that would be great uh, last week I mentioned about feeding cats now under Courtright administration, we had street cats, and you could catch them and take them up to the zoo, former zoo at Naog, and get them neutered. And some people have complained. I mean, I have one kitty cat who lives on the back porch. I couldn't pick him up even in the coldest weather and take him in the house. He won't come near me for two or three weeks after that. He still runs from me. I tried maybe January. And, you know, he doesn't bother anything. And most of his territory is in the immediate neighborhood. But they were supposed to be left alone. 
by animal control. And uh, it's like I said, some people sometimes have a legitimate, legitimate complaint and some people just complain. Uh, I went through 15 cats that I neutered and some are no longer around. And uh, it did stop a neighborhood, 15 feral cats around a neighborhood is a pretty serious problem, actually. Uh, with the hospital it was mentioned, and I will mention it once again, we really need a program where the state comes in and compensates it's their constitution that you have to accept uh, tax-exempt buildings, no matter what they're for. And, uh, you know, they're government buildings, they're hospitals, and I won't complain about Geisinger because I was there last week for the day. Uh, so we really need compensation from the state. Uh, we can't say, please go away. We need them. But the institutions serve people around the whole northeastern part of the state. And a lot of uh, rural hospitals have been closing. So, uh, and as far as the uh, height of the buildings, I'm wondering if we stop them from building 120 feet, are they gonna need two or three more blocks? And it, it, it is crowded there. I was there about three years ago and I couldn't wait to get home. Uh, no knock to the uh, serv medical services, but it wasn't fun. Guy came in, turned the channel on me, then he turned the TV off. It was a community TV. I didn't want to disturb him. In fact, I seen his obituary about three months later, so I was glad I didn't say anything. Uh, once again, Vax. Here, I'm no BSer. There's two vaccinations on each one of these cards. They're all for me. And uh, there was an article in a paper the other day about our Republican governor. He plans to make everybody re-register. He's not even governor yet. And he's announcing that he's going to engage in tyranny. What's he doing there, you know? It's really a shame. Thank you, Mr. Dobson. Too many people announcing conspiracies before they were even elected. They should be arrested. That exhausts the sign-in sheet for, for tonight. Would anyone else like to address council? Uh, good evening, Marie Schumacher. Uh, first, I would like to ask someone to uh, contact uh, Mr. West. I've put place two calls to him to discuss the land bank properties and I have not had any response from him. Uh, I'm, apparently he is unaware that the city is responsible for all the vacant uh, lots that are belong to the land bank and that five, the one in the 500 block of, uh, of Harrison Avenue is really needy. Uh, now, 7A, I've talked about metrics before and I uh, want to talk about them again tonight. How are we going to know that this was, this was a, uh, a good program? Can you tell me? How do we know that economic development has increased because of this project? And I think that perhaps they should finish one project such as the pocket park before they start with a brand new program. Uh, and again, East Mountain, East Mountain Road, everybody's talked about it already, and, uh, but I, 
I, the, uh, the crew, the, the DPW leader was fantastic. He could communicate with people actually. And the only thing that I would say um, that could have been changed if somebody had, I, it totally got by me until yesterday when I went up to go over the, now that the project was finished on Monday, I went up to look at it. And because Birch Street was not included, it stops at Derby Avenue and then you have a nasty portion of Birch Street, I think it's about the 1200 block, I don't know. And then you hit East uh, Mountain Lake Road and it picks up again. So perhaps that could be added to, that small section could be added next year's project. Um, 7G. Uh, I don't understand this. I understand there's a, a salary adjustment that goes with this. Uh, and I, I don't think the, begin, the middle of the year is a, ch is a time to change it. Plus it is, I think the more logical per thing would be if this is a, a limited, very limited short term project. And we've already paid, we already paid $2.3 million to answer and you all have the uh, the presentation they made looks to me as though they're they're doing this and if you have a small project or a one-year project I would say at the end of it if the persons can prove that they've done a good job on that they get a bonus you don't add somebody a permanent uh, a permanent increase in their budget for a job that's going to take a year maybe. So I think you need to take another look at that and uh, acoustics uh, that definitely was tonight I would have sworn and I, I would like to have heard more of our finance chair's presentation but it was almost as though he was intentionally whispering. And look at the debt. I mean, at least, at least we used to have one microphone that could be slid, slid down the table. Nothing. And, and she's right. So I hope if that is the uh, pro program on schedule that when we come back in September, there will we're, be. So we're, we're just getting an update. Yes. We, OK. Uh, and then Birch Street. Are those plates going to be on Birch Street between Cedar Avenue and South Washington Avenue forever? The plate, no. So, so that's, that's the issue they're having with, uh, apparently they ordered new hatches and that's going to alleviate, that's going to take place of the plates. The plates are just temporary. But according to them, they, that the hatches are what's going to alleviate the issue. We'll see what actually comes out of that. But okay, my time's up. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Would anyone else like to address council? Tom Coyne, Manuka. Members of council. First of all, Mr. Schuster, thank you for looking in with a detailed precision into a contract. It is one of the first times that this body in a long while has at least publicly disclosed that they have looked into rather than just block numbers that are given to council as a gigantic bucket for a project, have taken the time to do comps between what other groups, what other industry standards would have for the same project, taking a look and analyzed whether or not by cherry picking contracts and by cherry picking vendors who it is supplied to, whether or not there is an issue with drastic overpayments just because of groups who are, are considered favorable to the city who are disfavorable to the city's economic health and well-being. 
there needs to be a standard of review so that when these large line item numbers come across there is detailed backup so people can understand where the money is hidden within it and where the possible greed and, and greed and glut and profit taking is coming from. It's not a fact that we don't need projects in the city of Scranton, but there is a responsibility and a duty for the city to make sure that when it spends this money, it's done responsible and with responsibility, and that is just not done by large bucket numbers with no line item detail anywhere. For the, I was mentioned about the IT department and getting something up on the website. I find that somewhat humorous because as of date, city council is one member with a to be continued on the city's website. City council does not even deserve the respect to have their web page updated with information on four out of the five council members. So I can understand why a community member would wonder how difficult it is to get something changed when this body isn't even shown the respect that it should be on IT's own site. As of answer, I have talked to the mayor's office. I've gotten information back and have requested information. And one of the interesting things that came forward is during the early presentations, it was put out that they had one-on-one -on -one meetings and they had, uh, tw they had, I think it was 25 or 30 community stakeholders that were involved in, before the January request to the public. It seems through inquiring there was no stakeholders because I can't get the, that name. There were no public meetings, there were no stakeholders, and everything that was said before the council and disclosed to the public evidently is not true. It's either that or, at this point, they just don't want to divulge the stakeholders. I have to pursue it further because I did an open request, records request, and the city says they have no names for or any minutes or anything from meetings from any community stakeholders. I don't know how they cannot have meetings, yet publicly, uh, publicly say they've had them with, I think, 45 to 60 stakeholders who seem to now, at this point, by name, don't exist. Last, I look at June, Juneteenth. I understand, the re I understand the reasons for it. I also look at the, if it's another holiday, will it incur holiday pay for union employees and city workers? We have Martin Luther King, we have Black History Month. I understand Juneteenth is a switch from that. But how about Human Rights Day? We don't have that on December 10th or UN Day. How about recognition for the Nisi, the American interred Japanese people, as March 20th, which was the closure of the internment camps that the US put in their own citizens? How about Native American or Indigenous Day, which is the fourth Friday in September? How come we seem to lack recognizing all of these other groups? I think we need to be more comprehensive towards a number of parties. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Coyne. Would anyone else like to address council? <clears throat> Mr. Voldemort? Fifth order, 5A motions. Mr. King, do you have any motions or comments? <clears throat> yes, um, I would like to make a motion to reconsider um, resolution number 71 of 2022. Second. There's a motion on the floor to reconsider resolution number. Wait, what? Sorry, there's a motion on the floor to reconsider, uh, what was it, Mr. King? Sorry. It would be resolution number 71, 2022. Resolution number 71 of 2022, which is a uh, contract with uh, Nossman and Associates. Um, this would be, the motion 
would be a motion to reconsider. I believe Mr. King voted against um, the resolution. So if we vote on a motion to reconsider, it would then, uh, we would then have to figure out how it appears on our uh, agenda for next week. So we're not, we're just voting on the motion to reconsider tonight. We won't be voting on any um, resolutions. And, and if you recall, I on, tried to table it that evening. Yes. Um, on, on the question? Okay. So that evening I did try to table it and to get some answers from uh, the mayor uh, about, you know, this, this, I guess it would be a lobbyist that would be representing the city just to get more information about what it is that they were going to be doing for, a, for the city. And uh, she provided um, a memo. Is this, is this memo listed in third order tonight? No, we could put it in third order for next week. For next week, if we could, yeah. It was uh, dated June 1st uh, so regarding federal government affairs assistance. Anyone else on the question? Yes. So on the question, if we're going to make a motion in fifth, do we have to put that in writing beforehand? No. All right. With that being said, I just want to, um, I guess, warn my other council members that um, there's been a pattern that's been occurring. It's when certain items get voted down, they're brought up for reconsideration or their other sources are found to, uh, to secure these positions and, and other things. And, I feel like council is uh, folding here with this one, and we're going down a slippery slope. Anyone else on the question? I agree. This was voted down, and I'll vote it down again. Anyone else on the question? All those in favor? On the question. The, on uh, the question. I was uh, in support of this piece of legislation when it was introduced in fifth order, uh, and then I was absent from the, the meeting when it had been uh, voted down. So I am in, in support of the motion to reconsider. Anyone else on the question? The only thing I have is, uh, Ms. Attorney Gallagher, would you be able to, uh, I think it, the question is, is, does it have to be reintroduced or how does that work? So could we, would you be able to look into that just for Frank by the end of the week? Yeah, I will. I believe it does have to be reintroduced. Yeah, I would think so. I didn't know what the, um, Okay. But I'll touch base with Frank and, and uh, council members. Uh, I'll get you an answer tomorrow. All right. Thank you. All those in favor of the motion to reconsider signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. The ayes have it and so moved. Is there anything else, Mr. King? No. Mr. Schuster, do you have any motions or comments? Um, two things. Um, Number one, uh, we did receive the labor billing request that I asked for probably over a month ago, um, which I'd like to have put in third order next week. So, Mr. Yeah, Goldenberg, just... if we could put uh, the labor billing in third order for next week. Um, I wish I had a copy of it tonight to show the public what it looks like, but um, I'd say more than 60% has been redacted. So, um, from the, the page I saw today, it didn't look like you could make any sense of, of what was in the billing other than the prices. Um, other than that, um, this week was June 6th. It was uh, the anniversary of D-Day. I didn't really see too much about it, but um, just like to say uh, uh, thank you to those troops. That's all. Dr. Rothschild, do you have any motions or comments? Uh, I do not at this time. Thank you. Mr. McCandrew, do you have any motions or comments? Just a quick one. Mrs. Jeffrey's concerned about the <clears throat> IT department and putting that on the website. Could you, she placed two calls, didn't get an answer. Can you please uh, follow up with that? I will, Mr. McCandrew. Thank you. That is all I have. Thank you. Uh, and Mr. Waldenberg, on that, could you see if, what the process is on that point, what the process is for organizations, citizens to put in requests? Um, for events to be put up on the city website. All right, I'll do that also. Thank you. Um, just a couple things tonight. Mrs. Jeffries also brought up uh, the technology upgrades, and that's going to be a part of the the initial part of it. It's going to be a part of the sound system upgrade. Um, in terms of running the wire, we're not going to get to the phase two, which is then you know having the ability to have screens and have them up up there. But with 
the uh, changes to the sound systems, we're also going to have them put in place, you know, the wiring that would be needed to eventually do that. So we're only, but it's not going to be done as part of that project, but we are moving in that direction. Um, it's still, you know, for work to be done in, um, we did, Mr. Voldenberg sent me an email today in response to a question I have, and I just haven't had a chance to look at it yet. But it's still, August is still the target there. Um, and then just in terms of uh, Center Street, it's only a small section of uh, Center Street. We're not really, and we're not giving it to anybody. Um, it's being used as a public event space, but we're just asking that, uh, really that Scranton tomorrow lead the effort in terms of, um, you know, what the policies are in place for putting it out for the public to request that space. Um, you know, this sort of idea has been uh, successful in a lot of other cities as more of a city center and a place for people to congregate um, in a downtown setting. Um, so we're not really giving it away. We're not giving it away to anybody. It's still going to be a city street. We're just closing it to um, vehicular traffic for it to be more of a pedestrian corridor. And that's all I have for this evening. Mr. Voldemort. 5B for an introduction, a resolution adopting Juneteenth as a public holiday in the city of Scranton, celebrated annually on June 19th. <clears throat> At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? Uh, on the question, a good, uh, a good point was brought up during um, public comment tonight. So can we just ask how it, uh, how it affects our departments when it comes to holidays and how many departments are affected? I'll check, sir. Thank you. Anyone else on the question? I think how it was laid out to us to answer Mr. Coyne's question is they're not for the for the public safety unions they're not going, they're not adding an extra day off on the calendar year or an extra holiday. I think the body itself has to decide which one they want to give up for that one. Yes, that's how it was explained to me in caucus. I'm sure that'll be verified by uh, Mr. Woldenberg's inquiry. That's yeah, so my that we did discuss that, right? Yeah. 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 Right. So yeah was, I mean, I'm also bringing it up because it was in the caucus, um, but just getting a clarification sure. on yeah. what that is. Because it was already, you know, declared a federal and state holiday, so it just needs to be declared a city holiday so that an MOU could be discussed on which one they want to they wanna trade off with. Um, anyone else on the question? All those in favor of introduction, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, and so moved. Sixth order, no business at this time. Seventh order, 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for adoption. File the council number 13, 2022. Closing certain portions of Center Street and Lee Court to vehicular traffic to develop a pedestrian living alley to support economic development downtown and encourage public health through pedestrian activity. What is the recommendation of the chairperson for the Committee on Community Development? As chairperson for the Committee on Community Development, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question? On the question, just to clarify too, uh, you know, during, I believe it was Ice Fest, this section of, uh, the Ice Festival, the, this section of Center Street was used, and it was actually used well in terms of a pedestrian meeting place and event space, um, as an example. Anyone else on the question? On the question, I uh, also believe that this past first Friday in Scranton, uh, there was some more foot traffic along that street. Um, and just kind of gave a preview as to what it might um, seem like when the street is closed down. I think this would ensure the safety of pedestrians who are there um, so that vehicles aren't traveling down the street. Uh, there will still be access to the bank and to the parking that, uh, that is also along that street. Uh, I think that it's a great idea. I've been to other cities that do have something like this in Dublin, Ireland. Uh, there is a really neat section of town that is popular, especially among tourists, uh, but uh, that, that does have a walking path where vehicles are not allowed and uh, that there are several businesses and, and bars that, uh, that people frequent. So um, 
I'd love to see something in our city that gives people that opportunity to congregate. Um, and uh, according to the backups, Grant Tomorrow will be the ones to administer that that project. Um, just because they're they have other projects for the city, I don't think that means that they can't also take take this on and, and make it a successful project. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Anyone else on the question? Yeah, I've seen a model uh, like this in Lancaster a couple of years ago when I went there with my wife, and it was vibrant during the day on a weekday and at night, and it was an artery to some other businesses. So uh, it, it was a pretty cool experience. I'm, I'm glad and look, hope, I'm hopeful to, to experience here. Anyone else on the question? Roll call, please. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Mr. Dunningham? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. 7B for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for adoption. Resolution number 83, 2022. Ratifying and approving the execution and submission of the grant application by the City of Scranton to the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development Greenway Trails and Recreation Program for up to $250,000 to be used towards rehabilitating Robinson Park. What is the recommendation of the Chairperson for the Committee on Community Development? As Chairperson for the Committee on Community Development, I recommend final passage of item 7B. Second. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Mr. Dunningham? Yes. I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. 7C for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for adoption, resolution number 84, 2022, ratifying and approving the execution and submission of the grant application by the City of Scranton to the Pennsylvania Office of the Budget for the Redevelopment Assistance Capital Program for up to $2 million. <coughs> to be used by Lackawanna College for the Center for Technology Innovation Project. What is the recommendation of the Chairperson for the Committee on Community Development? As Chairperson for the Committee on Community Development, I recommend final passage of item 7C. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Mr. Dunningham? Yes. I hereby declare item 7C legally and lawfully adopted. 7D for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for adoption, resolution number 85, 2022, ratifying and approving the execution and submission of the grant application by the City of Scranton to the Pennsylvania Office of the Budget for Redevelopment Assistance Capital Program for up to $500,000 to be used by Admiral Management LLC for the 326 Adams Avenue project. What is the recommendation of the chairperson for the Committee on Community Development? As chairperson for the Committee on Community Development, I recommend final passage of item 7D. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Mr. M or Dr. Rothschild? Sorry. Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Mr. Dunningham? Yes, I hereby declare item 7D legally and lawfully adopted. 7E for consideration by the Committee on Rules for adoption, resolution number 86, 2022, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a memorandum of understanding with the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture Division of Weights and Measures to delegate specific weights and measures inspection and enforcement responsibilities to the city of Scranton. As chairperson for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7E. Second. Second. On the question. On the question. Mr. Boldenberg, um, when this was introduced, I asked the question about um, Railroad Avenue. We were having some trouble with the, with the weights of the trucks that were going through there, and I asked if we could um, see if, um, you know, adding to this uh, MOU, if we could help with that issue. Did we ever get a response back from the administration on that one? I'm awaiting the response from Chief Carroll on that matter and on the overall truck traffic on Bellevue. Okay. Thank you very much. I, I'm not going to hold this, um, this piece of legislation up, but if we could still follow up on the answer to that, that would be appreciated. I will. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else on the question? 
Roll call, please. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. I hereby declare item 7 e legally and lawfully adopted. 7F for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 87, 2022, authorizing the Mayor and other appropriate City officials to execute and enter into a Memorandum of Understanding between the Scranton Police Department and the Scranton School District regarding the policies and procedures for school resource officers. As Chairperson for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of Item 7F. Second. Second. I have a question. Roll call, please. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Mr. Dunningham? Yes. I hereby declare item 7F legally and lawfully adopted. 7G for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 88, 2022, adding the responsibilities of American Rescue Plan Act Director to the Director of Community Development's portfolio and allocating ARPA administrative funds accordingly pursuant to the City of Scranton ARPA Spending Plan, Resolution 69 of 2022. As Chairperson for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of Item 7G. Second. On the question. On the question, so um, like I stated last week, and this is nothing personal. So, first of all, uh, Mrs. Cipriani came here, wouldn't get, wouldn't move into the city, and got a salary. I voted no for her position. I voted no for the waiver to allow her to, to, to work here without living here. Then she's here about two years. She got two raises. Um, last year's was over ten thousand dollars, and then now this this ARPA raise. Um, is going to be $35,000 more. That's $5,000 less than the city controller makes. All right, so now her salary would be $100,000 a year, um, it's getting paid more than the mayor. So uh, in good conscience, I can't support someone making, first of all, $100,000 and, and not living here. Okay, it was okay when it was 50, but 100, and it wasn't, well, it wasn't okay for me, but 100 now is, is just, uh, is, it's a game changer for me, even more so, to, to make more than the mayor who, who's required to live here. Um, and then also to the fact that I mentioned last week, even though I'm voting no, I think that the ARPA money dictates, okay, we need a director. There's money for a director. There's two corresponding positions that are posted now. So I still believe that, you know, let's hire a director. It's only for five years. It's not for eternity. And have one person with laser beam focus on the disbursement of these funds, and not someone who has two other divisions of the city on her plate. So I'm just reiterating what I said last week, and I'll be voting no. Anyone else on the question? So also on the question, um, I stated some similar points last week. Um, at this point, I feel that Mrs. Cipriani has spread too thin with lips and code enforcement, and that's been put on the back burner, and I, I wouldn't be able to uh, put more on her plate I wouldn't feel good about that so I did ask last week of how her time spent during the week would be allocated we did get a response back today um, and it was stated that uh, the mayor said in a memo to us that Mrs. Cipriani devotes 64 percent of her time to OECD 17 percent to code enforcement and 19 will be allocated to the ARP funding um, like I said at this point, I feel she spread too thin with lips and code enforcement, and I think we're putting that on the back burner. And I think 17% towards code enforcement isn't enough at this point in time. I would not want to put more on her plate. I'm glad that Mr. McAndrew brought up the waiver um, at that point in time when uh, a waiver was adopted. I think her salary was around $52,000. Now we're at the point of $100,000. Um, and I think at that point, we should be moving into the city. Um, it's also my understanding that uh, HUD reimburses the city for OECD salaries, including Mrs. Cipriani. So um, with her time spent, if she's only spending 64% of her time with the OECD, how can the city get fully reimbursed, reimbursed for Mrs. Cipriani's salary? So that's going to be a question I'm going to send to you, Frank. Um, 
if she's only allocating 64% of that time to OECD, how are we being fully reimbursed for her we're, salary? We're not being fully reimbursed for her salary. A part because of her LIPS responsibilities, the city does cover a portion of that salary. Okay. Um, if we could still send that over, Mr. Voldenberg. Um, I'm just making sure that we're above board um, with that. And um, uh, also, it was brought up in public comment about switching salaries in the middle of the year. Um, I think we have to look into, do we have to open up the budget for a salary change mid-year? Um, I will also be voting no. Anyone else on the question? Um, first off, I, you know, I do think that uh, she really just oversees licensing inspections. Licensing inspections still has a director. Um, but I do think it's tied into community development. And I also think that uh, the ARPA money needs to be tied into all the other grants that we're applying for through the city. So I, I do see some uh, linear justification for that there. Um, in order to maximize our ARPA dollars, it's better to just use that as a grant match than to fully fund um, <clears throat> that project. Also, our uh, the answer advisors did uh, recommend that we hire uh, three full-time AP or three uh, ARPA staff members, uh, one being a director, two being a project manager, and then one to do uh, constituent services and uh, communications, meaning to sell the grant programs that are out there, whether it be for nonprofits, for small businesses, to allow them to go out and let them know that those <laughs> funds are available. Um, I also think that the city, I believe the city does need to have a point person to sign off on any reports that doesn't, that isn't covered under ANSWER's contract, the quarter, quarterly reports that need to be sent um, to the federal government regarding any ARPA uh, spending there. So I think, you know, in, in terms of whether you hire a, another full-time person to do that or not, I feel like we are saving money. And with federal money, that has to be justified. So I'm confident that timesheets will be taken there in order to justify um, the covering of that salary. So I will be voting yes because I believe it does add more uh, money that we could spend in terms of programming, not in administrative costs. I'd Aaron. like to add that in the short time that I'm here, I've been pretty impressed with Mrs. Cipriani in terms of the number of grants she's been able to apply for and, and get awarded. So um, I believe that she has the ability, the capability, and the skills to be able to handle um, this load. And I'll be voting yes. Anyone else on the question? On the question, I, I provided my reasoning last week and um, yeah, some very similar reasons to uh, what Councilman Donahue had explained. Uh, for why he's voting on this piece. Um, I was happy that we did receive today uh, what her breakdown would be for time spent to each area um, for, her, uh, for her role. And uh, code enforcement does have its own director. So she's not performing all the duties that would be needed for the director of that department. I believe she just oversees it and, and assists where she can. Um, and she's already been doing much of the work that an ARPA director would be doing. Uh, I think she's been really critical to our communication with, with ANSWER and in our development of our plan for the ARPA funds for our city. Um, so I, I, I believe we do need to designate someone as a, as a director, um, and I'm uh, confident that she'll be able to take on that role, and um, I'm in support of, of this piece. Thank you. Anyone else on the question? Yeah, so I just want to swing back here a little bit. So let me understand this clearly. So we're making Mrs. Cipriani the ARPA director, all right? And she's only going to dedicate 19% of her day to dispersing uh, 60 some million dollars and overseeing it. I, I, that, that even, I have a bigger problem with that. 19% of anybody's day from, okay, say she works more than eight hours a day. We'll give her credit for that because that was kind of explained to us. But just do the math, 19% of a workday devoted 
to the American Rescue Plan I, I, as a director, I don't think that's what, what that position was designed for coming down from, from ARPA and its conception or even through ANSWER. I, I, I just have a little problem that that's the only amount of time dedicated. And I know she's going to have two subordinates and that's fine, but as a director, 19% is a small part of the day. Anyone else on the question? Roll call, please. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Schuster? No. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. Yes. McC Mr. McAndrew? No. Mr. Dunningham? Yes. I hereby declare item 7G legally and lawfully adopted. 7H for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for adoption. Resolution number 89, 2022. Ratifying and approving the execution and submission of the grant application by the City of Scranton to Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development Greenway, Trails and Recreation Program for up to $250,000 to be used towards rehabilitating Kapowski Park. What is the recommendation of the Chairperson for the Committee on Community Development? As chairperson for the Committee on Community Development, I recommend final passage of item 7H. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Mr. Dunningham? Yes. I hereby declare item 7H legally and lawfully adopted. 7I, previously tabled. Resolution number 81, 2022. Authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a contract with PFM Financial Advisors, LLC, to provide financial advisory services for the city of Scranton for the period of four years. What is the recommendation of the chairperson for the Committee on Finance? As chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7I. Second. On the question? On the question. So, you know, I, I had an issue with this resolution. I uh, posed some questions to administration. I finally got them. I, 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 it took a while. Um, but the answer to my questions were, and I asked, so this is pretty much a renewal of the contract or an extension of the contract, and their duties will remain the same. So. With that said, they're not going to be taking on any other responsibilities. We were promised that. So they should stay in line with the contract. Um, I'll keep an eye out, but I'll vote yes uh, for this because I, I got my questions answered. Anyone else on the question? Yeah, I'd just like to add to that. So uh, we did get an email at BA Larry West advises the 2022 contract with PFM Financial Advisory is a continuation of the same services with no new services offered for the 2022 proposal. Anyone else on the question? Roll call, please. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Mr. Dunningham? Yes. I hereby declare item 7I legally and lawfully adopted. Eighth Order 8A, file the Council Number 9, 2022. This piece of legislation is the updated zoning ordinance. It is tabled to allow for additional input, amendments, and any changes. 8B, Resolution Number 82, 2022. This piece of legislation is the liquor license transfer. Uh, it is tabled to allow for a public hearing that will be held uh, next week, June 14th. If there's no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting's adjourned. Thank you.